My name is Ron LeBlanc, and I'm an international gem hunter. My partner Diane and I explore the world looking for gemstones, and this is the story. I'm here uh, today. We're in downtown Toronto here. This is our modest little club. But I'm here with Mr. Duke Redbird. Now, Duke Redbird is uh, a would I, I a hard time describing these guys. They've got so many letters after their names. They've done so much. But anyways, Duke Redbird is a, is a polymath. Uh, he's a great poet. Uh, he's a public intellectual. He's uh, 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 an academic, a businessman. Uh, more things that you can count. I've forgotten half the things uh, uh, about Duke, but... Uh, uh, and a uh, good writer, he's been in TV, he's been in the movies, he's an actor, and uh, I'm glad to have Duke here today, and we're going to discuss all kinds of things. We're going to circle around the idea of beauty and enhancement, because we're in the gem business, but it, we're also in the other, the, the, the other versions of art as well. We're very interested in all the expressions of beauty. It could be fine art, could be poetry, could be writing, could be song, could be dance, all those things that animate life. And Duke, of course, is on the top of the hill of all those disciplines. Now, this guy beside me as well, this is Duncan, without question, in my view, and my view is pretty strong, this is the best gemologist in Canada. He knows all about gems. He was head of the Canadian Gemological Association, still is. Aren't you president or vice president? Vice. Vice, for God's sakes. Well, you could be anything you wanted. He's also the uh, buyer and, uh, and, and uh, part owner and vice president of uh, Dupuy Auctions, right? And but uh, but but he's been a gemologist. He is really the top gemologist for years and years. He was in a very highly accredited uh, lab, and so he is the man. He's what I want to be in gemology. Uh, he is without question uh, uh, the top dog in this field. So I'm very interested to talk to both of these guys. And just for fun, I'm going to do a very specific thing with my friend here. He doesn't know I'm going to do this, but it's this. Okay, you're flying with me and Duke, and we're going off to. Madagascar, all right? Mm -hmm. And you're on the plane, and of course, guess what happens? You lose all your instruments, all right? Mm -hmm. We arrive in Madagascar, right? Somebody comes up to us. You don't have an instrument. Maybe you got your polarized sunglasses. I'll give you that. You got a loop. That's it. I put five, five blue stones. Oh, you got your loop. I put five blue stones in there. You know, I know what they are. There's a dark aquamarine, all right? There's a spinel. There is a, uh, uh, a sapphire, of course. There's a piece of glass. Uh, there is, what other comes in blue? Uh, there's soda light and all kinds of other stuff. But uh, now. Tanzanite. Tanzanite, there's tanzanite. That'll do. How are you, let me ask you one, how are you going to separate the glass? What are you going to do without instruments? And, and may I add one thing first? If the person putting this in front of you was a guy like you or like Duke that we trusted, that's another way of being careful about stones, right? If you really trust the guy showing you, then you can trust him. But you should verify everything, shouldn't you, when you're buying? And what do you do? You got no instruments. Well, yeah, I think I think part of part of it is that uh, if you work with people you you know, you respect, and you trust, it's a good start. Not everyone always knows what they have either. Oh, though. that's a good point. Yeah, um, because sometimes. They were presented with something as a, a, a material, yeah. a tanzanite, and it turns out it's glass. And yeah. they didn't know because they didn't test it or whatever. But um, each gemstone does have different properties. So, you know, you, you, you've, uh, you've removed all of my instruments, but I still reached into my pocket because I, you, you don't leave home without your dead yeah, time sleep. Yeah. Um, you don't put it in your bags under the... It's, under it's, the... You don't check in. It's like your medications. This is... All right. The gemologist medication. So what are you going to do with um, this blue stone here? And, uh, and one of these two is an aquamarine and one of them is a glass. Well, some, some of them, Quickly. the reality is we've got some things that just don't have the same color. An aquamarine doesn't have the same color as a tanzanite. The, the colors are, are different. So I might look and say, this is, this is more light, for example. However, a tanzanite has uh, what's called pleochroism. So if I, if I hit up, pick up the tanzanite and just hold it up to the sky and turn it 90 degrees, it'll be purplish-blue and blue-blue. 
So it's not and, glass. And it's not glass because glass will be exactly the same color in every direction. But so will the spinel. Ah. Um, so the spinel and the glass behave the same way yeah. if, I, if I look from any direction because they're uh, singly refractive. They're the same color in every direction. Now what are you going to do? So separate the spinel from the glass. Separate the spinel from the glass. Uh, glass generally is, is relatively light. It's, it's, a, it's a entirely unscientific. But if I lift up the glass and I lift up the spinel, the spinel will be heavier by size than the glass because yes. the glass is light. So I, I, I don't know what it is necessarily, but I know that they're not the same and as And anybody other. dealing in spinel would be able to tell, can't you? We're capable as humans to very small things. Yeah, 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 we could tell that's heavy and that's not, right? Even though they're the same size. Yeah. yeah. Ah, so yeah. You know, one, one gem is heavier than another. By Unscientific, but you could separate those so two. This is not like this. Ah. Um, so it's... it's now I, the spinel look, and the sapphire. And now I've got, this, I've got the glass and uh -huh. the spinel, which are the same. They have okay. the same color in every direction. I look with my loop in the glass. Maybe there are little gas bubbles, which will not occur in any of those other stones. Ah. There may be little flow lines because it flowed into a mold. That won't happen in any of the other stones. In the sapphire, uh -huh. sapphires that are blue usually will have color zones that are angular. Yeah. That won't occur in any of the other gemstones. In the sapphire. In the sapphire. Yeah. So e each of them will yeah. have some... Uh, you know, 10 times magnification visible property or just, you know, with the naked eye visible property or with my corrected eyeglasses visible property. Right. Um, and so they can all be just differentiated from each other on the basis of small minor factors. Not necessarily what they are, but they're not the same as each other. Yeah. With the glass bubbles and flow lines, it, it'll separate. You're kind of sculpting, you know, pushing Ego, things. This is not that, can't this. be that, can't be that, and what remains might be that. That's right. And right? The, the, the idea of Eliminating possibilities, whatever remains must be what it is. Very Sherlock Holmesian. Exactly. It's interesting, isn't it, Duke, that, that it's not that scientific. It almost runs into the medical science. You know, the, the doctor's 80% right, but he might be 20% wrong, but he's dealing in patterns, he's dealing in, 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 in proportion. That's right. And, and so it's amazing how people think it's so absolute, but it's not. And what about things like heat? I remember people putting stones well, against their... We tend, we tend to read in our, in our books and in our gem classes that a, a piece of glass will not be as cool to the touch as uh, a natural gemstone. Yeah. I don't know that that's, oh, I that, see. that's too far from, from the scientific because if I've had a piece of glass in my pocket and I hand it's, it to you, it's, it's warm warming because, yeah. you know, it's been next to my body and yeah, yeah, warming yeah. up if it's on a hot day. Yeah, and I even a sapphire will pull heat. But yeah. if you had them all in particular... Uh, very uh, kind of static conditions That's right. outside your body, then you could theoretically, there, there, one would be hotter certain, than the other. Things yeah. will, will draw heat, certain things will draw less heat. Yeah. It's, it's, it's difficult to yeah. make that differentiation a lot of the time when you're out in the field. So yeah. simple things like color, color nuances, color variations, directionally inclusions. Yeah. So. Well, it's very interesting that it's not, not scientific, but, but, but I would suggest that uh, you can get at... Uh, at a preponderance of the truth, even with nothing, right? By the guy who's giving it to you, by where you are, by some of these small tests, you can usually get at it. But that's asking way too much of a layman. Well, that, that's a the layman thing. Layman can't buy that. If, if I'm out in the field and I've never done this before, yeah. um, I am taking a risk. So I, I either yeah. deal with people I know and trust. Yeah. And they generally will be honest with me, but they may yeah. not know necessarily what it is. Um, and, uh, but I'm, I'm take, certainly taking a risk. And if, as someone who's, who's very knowledgeable, uh, you're still going to be taking a risk because you yeah. don't know 100% because you're taking these, these guesses to, yeah. to an extent. I, I want to just so very then quickly, you take it back to your lab. And so and do, do very quickly tests. before we evolve uh, off of this, I just want to tell you a little story. I was in Alakaga. Alakaga, as you know, is a tough, tough place, all right? Uh, one of the toughest places in the world, one of the biggest sapphire places in the world, one of the poorest, one of the most dangerous. Uh, it's in southern, uh, uh, southern Madagascar. Lots of stones there. The big sapphire field. I'm sitting there along the way, and it's a dangerous place. You got five dollar prostitutes and armies trying to get uh, stuff all the time. The cops are going by for bribes. Anyways, I'm, I always get, I always bring some uh, 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 security with me, and I always bring uh, lots of expertise. And always a cutter because we're always buying rough. So I want to find out what to. Be. He's going to tell me what we're going to end up with. And it was one time I'm sitting there, and I know a little bit about gems, not like you, my friend. And I'm also with another friend of mine, uh, Pino, and I'm another friend of mine, Ari. Ari's a top guy in town, top cutter. Pino's a top gem hunter and gem guy, a GIA guy as well. Uh, and we're sitting there, and I was another guy, and Bernie was sitting there, and someone threw a stone 
on the table. And we're sitting there in a bar and everybody's throwing stones on. We're trying to be careful. We got a bowl of water here. We're washing off the stones. It also gives us a little magnification we can look in. And we see a stone I decide to bid for. I, I want to get a stone early, show that we're keen. And we had a big bag of money here and I got a big nasty guy to take care of that. And, and they show us a stone and I said, oh, that's, it was about a gram and a half. About a gram and a half of a stone, I figure I'd get two carats out of it. I look at it, it's nice, it's a regular stone, it's got pink in it, it's got blue in it, which is very uh, indicative of uh, sapphire from the area. Area, And I go, that's not bad, that's not bad. I pass it to Ari, he looks at it, and he looks at it real, he looks into it. He goes, that looks good, I give it to Pino. And Pino looks at it, oh yeah, I think it's pretty good. If we can get it at the proper price, we can start the deal. I uh, give it over to Bernie, he looks at it, it's good. I say to the guy, how much do you want for it? And he says something like $275. Every one of us, as soon as he said $275, Duke, every one of us pulled out. All these gemologists around thought it was real, but as soon as he said 275, because it was too low. And all along that street, they were selling stones back and forth, so he would know the price of it. But the fact that he was selling low had to mean that it was at least stolen, and or it was fake. So. That's not very scientific, is it? So none of these very sharp uh, stone guys would pick up that stone because it was too cheap. That was the information we got to stop us from buying that stone. Now, that has nothing to do with loops or nope. spectroscopes or polariscopes or refractometers. That's just human nature. If you're selling too cheap, it can't be real, right? Well, it reminds me of um, a scene from uh, The Merchant of Venice uh, where... Uh, the um, talk is around value, and it uh, goes, all that glisters is not gold. Often you have heard this told. Many a man his life has sold, but my outside to behold. Had you been as young in limbs and judgment old, then your suit had not been thus in school. Fare thee well, thy suit is cold. And in that scene, from Merchant of Venice, is Shakespeare. He speaks to the idea that you can't judge everything by the cover. And wisdom comes with experience and with uh, a lot of age is associated with it. And yes, uh, and even even the Shakespeare word, uh, people translate often, uh, uh, glistens, but it, the actual word is glisters. All that glisters is not that's gold. And that's the same with uh, everything associated with value, with beauty, with, uh, with uh, experience. Yeah, and, and nothing can match it, right? And nothing can match it, yeah. Yeah, you, you know what, uh, that's interesting because it, it makes me think of, you know, when people watch me out there doing my kind of Mr. Magoo thing and they're running around, and I look like I know what I'm doing most of the time, but there is a evident vulnerability in the way I run around like a crazy character. And they really think when they're watching that it's doable. You know, if Ron can do it, well, certainly I can do it. And, and, uh, and it really is a cautionary tale. Like this vlog that I'm doing right now, it's going to be about, uh, about, about going to Tanzania. But my God, you would not want to go there without the experience you need to do something. And their illusion is that you can just do so. You know, how many people have tried and and failed at, at, at gem hunting, for instance, you know. And uh, I've done it myself, tried and failed many, many, many times over and over again. It's, well, it's very, very tricky. And and I think uh, that, 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 that leads me to the idea. First, first is that in a year in a very, very dangerous and, uh, uh, you know, fluid kind of place, you know, and you certainly need things in place if you're going to do that. You'd need experts. You need people that you trust when you get there. You need, you know, you need the security. You need to know what you're doing. You need to know the market. And if you go there, uh, into Tanzania or anywhere and go there kind of without, without a lot of experience, because, you know, you've got to emanate that experience as well to garner the respect you need to cut the deal to start off with. They got to know that, you know, know what you're doing. But it was very, very, very difficult. This, this business is incredibly difficult. Because even the value thing, even with sophisticated people, even at that time, and there's probably not a commodity that's more uh, uh, used either to steal, to buy, to hoodwink, you know, 
right now, as we're speaking, there's, there's, uh, there's guys in Albania and Russia and maybe the USSR or USA that are trying to make a fake snow, right? They're building another, another, uh, sapphire that can't be, can't be, uh, identified, right? Or, uh, like they did for for emeralds, they get these unbelievably perfect emeralds, you know. Oh, absolutely. There and there's no there's no question. There there are there are those who who are up to no good. Um, I've been to Thailand. You sit down at a table in a trading area, and people start putting things stones down on a table. If you sit down, you're open to buy. Yeah. Um, and the first things that people will put down are things to test you. Test you. Yeah. Here's a piece of plastic. Here's a piece of glass. Here's a piece of junk, and it. It's basically if you just go no, no, then they say, okay, this person knows what they're, at least they know that that's a piece of glass or plastic or junk. Uh, so they'll start putting down better stones. But, yeah. you know, in, in any market, there, there are better quality, lower quality um, materials and people, people will, yeah. Uh, yeah. will buy them. People yeah. won't yeah. buy them. But there, there are people who are highly expert. Yeah. Uh, and all of us have bought stuff that's fake. Yeah. Because we're in a position where we don't expect it. We, there's synthetics that are being made. You know, we've, we've, we've grown synthetic rubies and sapphires for more than 100 years. And they're still out there. They're still making them. And they're um, still fooling people. And they're still fooling us. The people are still buying them. Yeah. Like I, I, when I went to Lacaca last time, there was a bunch of freshly minted, I got to say it, gemologists that were coming out of school. And when they went to Lacaca, they bought all the fake stones in the place. And when we got there, they thought we were the same thing. We spent three days there, never bought a stone. 70% were fake. Everything was a Vicks uh, vapor bottle that was cut like a beautiful sapphire. Uh, it was all reconstituted, fake, layered, uh, <laughs> uh, synthetic, simulants. Oh, boy. And we just couldn't buy because, because the history that these guys had left. Because they had made their mistakes. It was just naive. They didn't come with that experience. Well, well Duke, uh, 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 I'm very interested in other parts of that, but I'm not going to talk about it right now. And that, that's the idea of speculation, how stupid it is, and how investment is. I, I'm going to do another uh, vlog, I think, on that. But I'm just wondering why people are so bewitched with, uh, with, with, uh, with gemstones. Is it, is it the beauty? Is it... Uh, I, I know your own culture... Uh, did it ever have uh, a, a symbolic strength, the gemstones, or were they, did they ever play a part well, in the, your traditions? Or Well, the, uh, the idea, uh, of course, is uh, rarity. The yeah. rarity, uh, uh, and it's, uh, it's like an expression that both of us uh, have used many times, uh, is that on the gray beach of humanity, it's a, uh, colored stones that you pick up. And uh, that's uh, yeah. what gems are about. Uh, yeah. They uh, they are special because they've been delivered by, as in our culture, we talk about the Mother Earth reveals uh, that which is precious to the uh, to the human eye. And and uh, if it if you respond in a in a, an emotional way towards something that is quite rare and quite beautiful and and significant, uh, the Earth itself has uh, endowed you, gifted you, uh, given you something that is worthy. Uh, uh, you would have to believe that you're worthy of it. And in that respect, yes. Uh, but uh, the uh, uh, these stones and these gems were never commodified. And the difference is uh, the commodification of beauty is what has spoiled uh, beauty and made it possible for people to counterfeit it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, if it wasn't, if, if, uh, if you weren't going to, if there was no way to make money off of the process, no one would ever do it. Yeah, There'd be yeah. no, no reason. Yeah, to. there's something that really bewitches people about, uh, about gems. And I wonder, because you talk about bestowing beauty, but, Lord, you know, None of us could, I don't think, maybe Duke could with his, uh, uh, with his poetic sense, but it's very difficult to, what the hell is beauty? Like, why is it so attractive to us? Like, there's a rarity thing, that's one thing, but there's something kind of otherworldly about, about a beautiful red ruby or, uh, or that emerald green, that, that stunning uh, muzo uh, emerald green. There is something that's beyond, I don't know, it just seems to be inexplicable. Well, like Duke said, 
<clears throat> the, 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 referring to the gray beach. Yeah. Um, if any of us walk along a gray beach and we see a red thing, yeah. we'll all pick it up. Yeah. We'll all pick it up. We'll put it in our pocket. We'll carry it around. Yeah. We'll show our friends, look what I found. This is beautiful. And it's, it's not because it's valuable in the sense of money. It's valuable because I've never seen one of these things before. Yeah. And we, we, we value things because of their rarity. Yeah, I've never seen a red a thing and never seen than, a green thing. I think it's a bigger factor than we think. It's a rarity and idea. The, the, the fact that it, it's, it's unusual. We all, yeah. we, we're fearful of unusual things. Yeah. But when we walk along a beach yeah. that's all gray and we see a red thing or a green thing or a blue thing, you know, it's the color of the sky. What, what, what's that? You know, uh, yeah, and, and we all agree that it's beautiful, like the color of the sky or, or, or that, that, that ruby, that beautiful ruby red, the pigeon blood ruby red. We all agree. We all agree with that. But I, I would suggest that rarity cannot be the only thing. There's something a bit more animating and transcendent than that. Because I can get you a lot of rare stuff, and often when you're buying stones, I say, well, that's very rare. You've got that Bix bite, you know, a bad base of Bix bite, or you've got that, some of those new stones they got cooking. You know, that, that it's not really pretty, but it's very, very rare. You have this very rare, but of course you can't sell it. You don't really like it. You know, uh, nobody all, not everybody agrees with you as well, but it's very, very, very rare. Now, for the collector, that serves his purpose, but if you're in the open market, you can't, rarity can't be the only thing. It has to be an understood, everybody has to love the stone. You know, when you have a good ruby, everybody loves it. And it's a bit more than rare. It's rare indeed, but it's also, there's something, uh, well, it's, it's beauty. Uh, I it mean, that's beauty. the bottom line is beauty. It is beauty. I think the, uh, value, uh, is, uh, associated with the story. The story of the, so. of the, yeah. of the, of the stone, uh, adds, uh, value yeah. beyond, beyond the, uh, actual value of the stone. And the reason I say that is that, uh, a simple thing like an arrowhead, uh, which is, uh, Plain, uh, you know, and it's an arrowhead. But when you begin to tell the story of that arrowhead, that arrowhead may, in terms of commodity, uh, commodified, uh, maybe twenty dollars. But when you say this stone, five thousand years ago, a man went down by the river and saw a deer and and you tell the whole story mm. of this all of a sudden you hold it up to the light and say there in this little stone is a history of a people and it's yours for however much you want to pay for it that adds the value and the preciousness is associated not only with the beauty of it, but also the story that goes with it. I think that's very important. I think that's a well, well said. Isn't that true? <laughs> no, absolutely. We talked about what this thing is here, the pin you're wearing. No. What a beautiful story that is. But it, yeah. but it, it matters. They think the stories are important. Uh, the number of people who've said to me, Duncan, you spend way too much time looking through this loop. Just look at it. Is it beautiful? The story behind a, a, yeah. a, a jewel, yeah. the story behind an arrowhead, yeah. uh, who, who and where and when yeah. and, and why and, and what's the association and how, you know, it, it, it's, it's very important to, uh, to tug on the heartstrings and, yeah, yeah. because it, it, that's where, you know, cultural, cultural meaning, historical meaning, we we do look too much at the inclusion. Yeah. Is it yellowish blue or yeah, greenish yeah, yeah. yellow or whatever? The is it something that just that speaks to you? Yeah. Uh, whether it's a story because we can we don't know who it was who hunted for the deer with that arrowhead, but we know someone did. Yeah. Um, that that yeah. arrowhead is it's a piece of flint. You know, I could find yeah. it on a beach any day, but not that one. Not yeah. that one that has I think the we history. Need to, get to the four C's. Uh, C, 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 you know, clarity, uh, you know, uh, whatever they are, <laughs> plus story. We should put an S on the four C's, you know, clarity. Culture. Uh, culture. Yeah, yeah, culture. It's, it's, culture, it's, yeah, the five C's. It's a very important factor. Yeah. and It's very interesting because, of course, if I had a, a champagne glass that uh, I was drinking out of and I had a champagne glass that Marilyn Monroe was drinking out of, it would probably uh, it'd be more expensive, you know, because of the story. Or less, because or it's less broken. Or less, because of the story, yeah.
Oh, it's interesting. It's uh, but the, I think the story yeah. the stories are are yeah. terribly important, and even in important major gemstones. Yeah. If I have a yeah, if yeah, I have yeah. a sapphire yeah. from from Alakaga, uh, it isn't going to generate the same price as a as a sapphire from, from Kashmir. Kashmir, yeah. Why? Because yeah. we haven't mined sapphires in Kashmir for 120 yeah. years, yeah. and so therefore, they're they're. There's a story behind them. I mean, Kashmir is a complicated and fraught place. Yeah. It's, you know, a yeah. conflict zone. and has been for a long time, and no one's mining sapphires, and there aren't any anyway. Yeah. But we love the idea that, that, that this, you know, remote place produced sapphires for about yeah. 50 years, and that's it. Uh, and, you know, a, a, a Colombian emerald is considered to be most important. We don't really get the story of why that is. It's just, yeah, if I have an, a, a, an emerald from Afghanistan, they can be as beautiful, yeah, but people but go, well, price, I've yeah. never heard of that. It, I didn't know they had them there. Well, both of these things that we spoke about is that All right, we're just stopped for a bit of tea. I'm going to reintroduce these lovely friends of mine I've known for many, many years. And uh, there's a, there is Elder Dr. Duke Redbird. He's a polymath of the first water. Uh, he's been an actor, a writer, a politician. Uh, he's certainly a world-famous poet, and uh, very happy to have him here today. And uh, beside him is my friend, another friend here, Do uh, uh, Duncan Parker. Duncan Parker is uh, vice president of uh, Dupuy Auction, and he's a buyer there, and he's without question, incontrovertibly, the best gemologist in Canada or maybe North America. He used to run a an uh, independent lab, one of the very few in the world. And also he's uh, been long-standing president and vice president of the Canadian Gemological Association. So I'm happy to have these guys here. And we're going to talk a bit about beauty and gems and other stuff. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, so off we go. So, uh, Duke, uh, remember I, 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 a little while back I was telling you we dug a, I dug, they were talking about that 30,000-year-old grave. And they, and they dug up and they found in that grave a lovely necklace made of uh, a fo uh, fox teeth and there was some other animal kind of thing. So it, it struck me as, uh, uh, I always think sort of jewelry and, uh, and stones as a fairly modern uh, kind of uh, uh, thing, but it's not. This adornment and the, the, the finding of gemstones and certainly uh, uh, rare gemstones have been ever thus. They've been around a long, long time. Uh, have you, in your own uh, uh, historical investigations, have you seen that or? Uh, abs absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the uh, uh, the adornment of uh, 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 with with jewelry that is earrings and uh, and necklaces and uh, bracelets and, and and rings and so on. Uh, Beautiful, beautiful jewelry, which over thirty thousand years old, uh, has been found in Mesoamerica and South America, amongst the Mayans, the Aztecs, the Incas, the Tolmec, the, the these, uh, and their gods were uh, adorned with these incredible, beautiful jewelry. So yeah. uh, with stones as well, the, not with just stones, gold with, gold, the, with stone, with no. stones that were that were shaped, that were uh, yeah. polished, that were that were Im embedded, glazed. They uh, there was uh, they were using uh, metallurgy, uh, yeah. electromagnetic uh, metallurgy, sixty thousand years ago. Uh, uh, like, I thought you invented that. Uh, uh, I guess not. No, uh, the uh, the the. Uh, the process was uh, was chemical, yeah. chemical based uh, electricity, wow. and they did uh, this kind of work. Um, so maybe not sixty thousand years ago, but at least yeah. thirty thousand years so, ago. So what is it that that uh, you know nothing has really changed? We're still wearing jewelry. Look at the beautiful stuff you guys well, put on today. Well, the, uh, uh, the the these precious. Uh, uh, Metals and and jewelry and and uh, yeah. sculpture and so on were there to adorn the gods. Uh, the uh, gods were assumed to have this kind of uh, beauty associated with it, and anyone who was uh, connected closely, like the Montezuma or uh, yeah. or uh, so, it's kind of uh, worship any, in some uh, way. It's something to do with worship. Well, the uh, the uh, wherever in the world you found people 
who were of that uh, aristocracy uh, were uh, the ones who got to wear the yeah. fine jewelry. Yeah. yeah. But it must have been also, look, I'm the, I'm the guy that brought in the Mastodon. I'm the good hunter as well. And they had... Well, that goes, with that goes back uh, yeah. many, many years before. Uh, yeah, now we're talking 60,000 years ago yeah. uh, with the Mastodons and, uh, and yeah. the, the early yeah. early uh, hunters and gatherer cultures, yes, uh, at that time. So it sure. always was there to distinguish one person from another, a hierarchy yeah, well, of success you, or, a, you, or a seniority. There, there, or a, that, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. hunters and gatherers, uh, later when they became uh, agricultural, they had more more uh, uh, opportunities to spend the time to do the uh, mining and to take care of uh, carving the, uh, and polishing the stones and creating jewelry, sure. It, it's no doubt that it affects you when you see it, isn't it? Like right. the black culture in the States where they went to the bling kind of idea, it was quite a very profound thing. I think they probably took it from a but what we would call the dominant culture. I don't know if that's appropriate uh, thing, but you know they adopted it, and you know, and well, it's and certainly it's very evident uh, in, yeah. uh, in in Africa of uh, thousands yeah, yeah, of oh, years yeah. back to the Egyptians. Yeah, uh, it was all uh, very you colorful. know, they they yeah. all uh, and uh, so uh, it's the Zulu culture with the flamboyance yeah. and the, yeah, but uh, it, but. You know, you have to be able to afford these things. Yeah. And so uh, when the, in the United States, of course, when the people came out of the ghettos and uh, began yeah. to uh, have yeah. access to money and to a certain amount of uh, power, uh, yeah. they began to was, wear the, you wear to show the jewelry. It, right? yeah. But I think to some extent there's, a, there's an element <clears throat> historically through, through the ages of uh, discovering beautiful things which have been provided by, you know, a God or whatever. Yeah. And so much of uh, the beauty of that bounty is uh, produced and, and provided in reverence to those yeah. gods, deities, providers of, of things. And so, you know, uh, the adornment, of the Egyptian pharaohs mm -hmm. were, were God. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Montezuma was, so you, yeah. you provide yeah. this bounty to the people who, are the God who, yeah. who to say thank you for, for what we have. And, uh, you know, it, 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 it's a, you know, a sign of achievement yes, nowadays. Uh, yeah. Uh, but it's, it's a, it's a sort of a sign of reverence to, to provide that bounty to say, look, it, this is beautiful things. We're giving you the best ones, God, or whoever that is, but I get to enjoy it as well because it's, it's, it's beautiful stuff. Um, you know, I, I love the idea of the, the, the hunter gatherers who live near water eating oysters. You know, around the world we find midden heaps of oyster shells. Mm. Uh, and the first gems were probably pearls. Yeah. You know, you yeah. eat an oyster and break your tooth. Yeah. And you go, what the heck? Yeah. And there's this shiny little bead. It doesn't yeah. have a hole in it. Yeah. But uh, people undoubtedly accumulated yeah. these yeah. little beautiful things. Yeah. It, 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 who are probably or found them on the beaches, like you were you were saying or, or, too earlier. Yeah. Well, it's it's a very interesting thing. Uh, I, I just think it's a powerful, powerful thing. Like I think it's profound and powerful. I think a woman or a man or uh, could ha could be naked without anything, and then suddenly the jewelry and jewels transform them. I think that's a remarkable power. You know, uh, and and uh, some people. And I've talked a bit about this before, and it's a kind of a subtle thing, but some people just will not wear something. They're, they almost feel like they're undeserving of, of the transformation, and they're more modest, you know. And, uh, and uh, further on, kind of the rabbit hole on that idea is often uh, there is a kind of modesty inculcated into the bourgeois and upper middle class, right? They say, oh, don't, don't show don't show our success. Don't show the jewelry. I, I think there's a certain amount of, of that in my area, which is auctions, where, uh, you know, grandmother uh, leaves her jewelry box to be divided amongst her grandchildren, and the grandchildren virtually all say, in many, many cases, 
where would I wear that thing? Yeah. Um, because it's, it, we don't live like that. We don't, yeah. we don't want yeah, to be ostentatious. Time. Yeah. Or we, you know, I don't go to galas or whatever it might be. Yeah. Um, but there's always someone else who, who treasures that and, and yeah. will be pleased as punch to have that beautiful ruby sapphire yeah. or whatever it might be or that yeah. necklace. You, you have to be uh, in a certain status category to get away with uh, wearing uh, jewelry as well because uh, it uh, also causes uh, jealousy, envy, and, yeah. uh, and uh, so in a yeah, community uh, to suddenly be the only person in the community wearing this ostentatious uh, uh, jewel. Uh, 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 yeah. well, who do you think you are? Uh, well, this is it. Yeah. And and so there's there's uh, hierarchies here that uh, yeah. have to be taken into consideration. So they may not they may say, "Well, I I'm not worthy," uh, but also uh, it's uh, with. With uh, jewelry and with riches and everything comes something called responsibility. Yeah. And a lot of people don't want to have the responsibility of carrying off uh, jewelry and yeah, riches yeah, and right. other things like that. be ready to play and it right then, out. You know? And then there's the yeah. other side of it where you get beyond that hierarchy of, of uh, jewelry and, and anything that represents wealth, and you take a vow of poverty, and that is the ultimate uh, expression yeah. of the greatest good that you can acquire as a human yeah. being, yeah. is to enter into that realm yeah. of the vow of yeah. poverty. Be a king without and, a crown. It maybe is the real definition of, uh, you know... Yeah. Yeah. Kingdom, king, kingdom shift, and there's, but, but there's somewhere in between because yeah. I think nowadays in 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 the gemstone market, a lot of people, you know, in their twenties or whatever, they they will never wear the tr that great grandmother wore, you know, yeah. in Downton Abbey days. They they won't wear the big blingy necklace, but they'll wear a beautiful single, beautiful two carat sapphire on a ring. That's just a sapphire on a ring mm -hmm. uh, because it's not ostentatious, it, and it's just the nicest. Most pretty. But they know they are worthy of it, and they are saying but to the, themselves, "It doesn't right? look like they're showing off." Either, yeah. Though it's just, yeah. You know, it's a, it's just that kind of color that anyone across the room would go, "Whoa, is that a sapphire? That's amazing." But you know, all this conversation leads me to the back to the same circle: is that there's an incredible lot of power on, on this stuff. Like you're talking about uh, hierarchies, you're talking about. Uh, demonstrations of success, of worth, of, of worshiping things. These are attributes we're giving jewelry and gems. And that's why it's so powerful, and they, and they hang around. The gems are never lost. They're, they're constantly compounding, and every year there's more found, and there's more out there, there's more in the back of the safe. So it's a tremendous, tremendous thing. It's well, well, it has, to, it has, to, it has to do with a uh, sense of immortality as well. Yeah, well, that, that's right. That, that's that, right. It's that like it, uh, 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 eternal, that right? That it's eternal. And uh, then there's another expression about uh, why would you gild the lily? Yeah, yeah. Because in its in its original lilius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why do it's, you? Yeah. It's, it's, it's all the alone, beauty. Yeah. The, all the gilding in the world won't improve it. Yeah, yeah. So these are elements that are yeah. constantly yeah. at work uh, in one's uh, yeah. reality yeah. on how they, because once yeah. you get it, what do you do with it? You, know, yeah. you can wear it. Well, I, I think we, we were talking earlier on when we were having a lunch about, about how when you, when, you, when you don yourself with that version of arraignment, you, you, you literally invent the environment you're going in because you're changing it. You know, you come in with a crown, with a cape, with a, with a silver thing, with a butt like this, you're a bit of a, a sartorial, but you actually, you're inventing a new, you're changing the whole environment, and then you have to carry it. Yes. If you're going to come in, think you're a queen, dress like a queen, act like a queen, you better be queenly, but what you've done is you've invented the environment, which is a kind of a... One of our highest attributes is to, is to imagine something and then to invent it. It's kind of very creative. And when that's what you see people walk in very, you know, tremendous, uh, uh, you know, finery on. You know, it doesn't have to be jewels, but jewels are part of that thing. And they come in and they actually change the world. The world is changed in front of them. And then, of course, you have to be able to carry it out or you're just a, 
You might, uh, you're just a gilded lily instead of yeah, a real lily. There's uh, uh, something that uh, it's, it's not not so much nowadays, but but traditionally, uh, you didn't wear any jewelry that wasn't gifted to you. Ah, uh. and so uh, the and that was a way that people like like these things that I'm wearing now yeah. were all gifts. Uh, uh. I wouldn't purchase them. Because yeah. by purchasing them, you are yeah. giving yourself uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, a that's value interesting. that... Other yeah. That's an interesting nuance, isn't it? Uh, and the story you were talking about yeah. earlier, the stories you guys were talking about. Yeah. Once again, so, the gifted story, right? Uh, I, I, this was given to me by my good friend or my that, aunt. Or, and, 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 and to be gifted with uh, something as beautiful as a, as a gem... Uh, uh, speaks to something greater than than uh, it, it, yeah. it goes to that place of love, and that's why when you give your 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 beloved a diamond ring, you are gifting. Uh, uh, the 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 bride doesn't buy her own diamond ring yeah. uh, normally. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to convince Diane. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. to get a little uh, closer uh, to buy uh, her own damn stuff. Yeah, but, but uh, uh, it may not work. The, 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 but. Uh, to the to to the most uh, wealthiest yeah. princess, yeah. and if you're a pauper, the most uh, 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 smallest little diamond, yeah, would be every bit as be much as yeah. as he's a given hope, everything as to her, hope, right? Right. It goes oh, it goes, goes to the idea yeah. of uh, the biblical story of, yeah. of the widow who gave the uh, last. Uh, of her, uh, her, her money, her little, little mite, yeah. to the, to the, to the, uh, to the box. Uh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, that's right. And and, uh, and I think the idea was uh, that uh, it's one thing for a multimillionaire to give a fifty thousand dollar diamond. It's much different when. The person has nothing and gives everything, yeah, and yeah. it's worth more than the uh, yeah. fifty thousand yeah. or a hundred thousand dollar diamond that a millionaire yeah. can just. Yeah. So these are all heavy symbols, uh, very uh, symbolisms, yeah. and yeah, and, uh, and these are icons. They, and, they, yeah, and they yeah, they connect uh, to uh, the idea of the, yeah. the 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 simple simple ring, yeah. uh, but you don't need it. Yeah. Um, uh, I wrote a poem called "The Marriage," where yeah, let's hear uh, that. Can you can it, you uh, sign the marriage well, it, poem? it expresses what is considered to be of value and and how we measure it, you know. And the poem goes: No priest had told her she was mine, and no ring bound her to me. No ceremony had sanctified her soul, and no paper had seen her name. Yet. Loving hands sewed the beads on my moccasins. Shining eyes greeted me after the hunt. Tender caresses put my spirit to sleep. And silent words told me I was brave. For the great spirit had beheld her virtue. His hand had led her to me. Our mother earth received us both. And we became one with their blessing. Oh, that's lovely, but but the trouble is that that's the end of selling us stones. You don't need stones. <laughs> you don't need a good poet. There, there's well, a good poem and a good poet is a gem. You know, there's so. there's there's no doubt about yeah. it. I mean, that's 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 beautiful. But dude, forgot we're uh, trying to sell diamonds and stuff. But uh, don't worry about yeah. that. Yeah. But the, 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 on the on the, the 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 subject of that, I mean, it's it's the beauty of of uh, of dedication and and a gift. Um, as opposed to say buying something for yeah. myself, uh, when when someone receives an engagement ring, for example, with a diamond in it, um, it's <laughs> it's a symbol. But the the other gift that that can be is, you know, I I'm getting engaged to someone. We're both students. We have no money, and I take my grandmother's engagement ring and give that or wear that because I don't have. I don't have the resources, but it's a symbol, the same symbol, yeah. but it has that extra little element mm. because yeah. it's, it's bringing stuff. something from my family. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I know people who've done that, yeah. and when they have more money, they upgrade, uh, yeah. but a lot of them, they, yeah. they will never, because that's, that's the one. Yeah. I said yes, or we yeah. agree, yeah. Yeah. and I put that on my hand, and I'll never... 
ever change that because yeah, that's again, the most important thing. Once yeah. again, in support of the idea of how powerful this stuff is. You know, it's uh, these, these symbols, like any great symbol or icon, it can really be powerful. Symbols in particular, they an array of meanings, but it's really quite powerful stuff. Absolutely. Make you love, say you love, last for a lifetime, grandmother's blessing. I think it's fantastic. But I, that, that's what always surprises me. And the reason why it surprises me so much is because gems are so lusted. When I, I'm in the business all the time and I see just the lust, sometimes I have to stop people from buying. Like I said, no, you can't afford it anymore. Stop it, stop it. I remember that happened a few times because they just had to have it. And the people have to steal it. You know, and they got to steal it. They see, they got it. They can't stop themselves. And so it has this kind of odd power unique to it. To it, it is such so symbolically heavy and rich uh, that it's a uh, it can it can bewitch people. There's no question. Well, we've had a great discussion here with uh, Elder Doctor Duke Redbird and Duncan Parker, and we spoke a lot about beauty and around gems, and uh, and uh, it's been a great afternoon, and I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>